guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's all about using up scrap. Okay, so here's the question. How many of you guys actually tried to make the wooden blinds, the wooden window blinds that I posted on a show a few weeks ago? Okay, if any of you did, how many saved your off cuts? Because I'm looking at these and I'm having a real hard time getting rid of them. We've got a whole bunch of 1 8 inch thick poplar and uh, it's like an inch and a half wide and I'm looking at these pieces and I'm thinking, holy crap, I can't just throw this out or burn it. So on today's show, we're going to run a bit of an experiment and I'm going to make something out of these. Well, we've got all of these scrap pieces, and like I said, they are one eighth of an inch thick, and they are an inch and a half wide, and they're 14, 15 inches long. Um, we're going to take them over to the table saw. We're going to install a cross cut blade in our table saw, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick through them and see which ones are absolutely not usable. Like I've got some here that this is not usable for anything in this project, so I'll probably end up throwing that in the kindling bin. But I'm going to go through them, see what's usable, and divide the pile in two. I'm going to cut half of them at 14 inches, and the other half I'm going to cut at 8 inches long. sure exactly how many we ended up with but this is where it gets a little messy. I've got some wax paper here that's just so I don't glue it to my bench but what I'm going to do is put glue on each side of the 8 inch piece and I'm going to glue it to a 14 inch piece and then I'm going to glue another 14 inch piece like that and sandwich it and then I'm going to take an 8 inch piece and like that and then I'm gonna have a 14 inch piece and I'm gonna keep going until I get all the pieces glued together once I get them glued up and clamped I'm gonna wipe off as much as the squeeze out as I can and then we're gonna have to leave it until uh, the next time I'm in the shop Well, as I'm going along, I'm finding it better to do them in groups. So now I have them here in three groups glued up, and uh, I'm going to put the last eight inch pieces in between those three groups and then clamp the whole assembly together. And there we have one of the messiest glue ups I've ever seen. But not to worry, I've got something in mind for this, so hang in there. And with that now, I'm going to have to leave this for at least overnight. Um, there's more to come on this. Some of you may already see where I'm going with it, but hang in there. Um, we're going to leave this overnight, and then once it's dry, we can take the clamps off and move on to the next step. Well, we're back, and truth be told, it's been a week. Um, couldn't get out to the shop prior to now, so we know the glue is good and dry but you can see it's quite a messy little glue up. So I'm gonna take this over to the bench and I'm gonna use a hand plane and I'm just gonna clean the top of it off, get all that excess glue out of there and uh, make this nice and smooth top and bottom.
when we've got it all cleaned up and nicely flattened and I'm just going to take it over to the table saw and I'm going to cross cut this back end here just to square it off. Well, now that we've got the end squared off, the next thing I want to do is take some more of our scraps and I want to put them in between each one of our glue joints. Uh, and the reason I want to do this is to stabilize it just a little bit to prevent chatter and get a cleaner cut. Because what we're going to do is we're going to measure out from where these little fingers start two and a half inches. And at two and a half inches, we're going to cut it at 30 degrees. Now, that will make the smallest tooth or the smallest finger that you have uh, in this arrangement at two and a half. And then we'll see whatever we end up with the length on the other side. Now that you have that angle cut, you can go through and remove all of your uh, spacer pieces to um, reveal your, your fingers of your feather board. So once you get all these spacers um, removed, we're going to head over to the bench and mark out some slots for the adjustment on this uh, particular project. So we need some grooves that are along the length of these boards here for adjustment in and out while using this feather board. And I want to come in at least a quarter of an inch on either side and we're going to have a quarter of an inch groove. Now <clears throat> this groove here that we're going to draw along or that we're going to cut we're going to do it on the router table using stop blocks. You don't want to take all the material at once. Do it a little bit of a at a time until you nibble your way through. It's just too much of a strain on the router bit, on the router table, I mean, or on the router motor. You're just going to have problems. So I'm going to set up the fence so that I'm coming in a quarter of an inch. I might even come in a little more, like three eighths, just to give me extra material on the outside of the slot so that we're not breaking away and, and snapping it. So let's do that. Let's come in three eighths and then do a quarter of an inch slot and the same on the other side. And we're gonna run it for most of the length of this particular uh, stock piece here, probably leaving uh, about a half to, to one inch at either end. So I'll just quickly show you the setup here. Using setup or stop blocks um, with this particular project doesn't necessarily work because you do not have a straight edge at both ends. It makes it difficult because of course if you have a stop block here, your project will stop at that point when you're routing this side. But if you're gonna nibble through from the opposite side as I'm going to do now, your stop block is here. You can see you've got quite a bit of difference between the two. So what I've done on both sides of our project is I've drawn start and stop lines, front and back, where I want the routing to start and stop. And I've also drawn start and stop lines on my fence. So as long as I start from here, regardless of what line I choose, and I stop, at the second line, regardless of which way I choose or what orientation this project is in, the length of this groove will always be the same. Because I'm coming in equal um, distances from the edge of the project, my fence never changes. So I'm able to route this side and then flip it over and route this side and then flip it again and route this and continue that way and the distance will always be the same from the edge. So I'm going to route this out, get these grooves done and just so you know, I changed my mind on the quarter inch bit and I went with a 5 sixteenths router bit just to give me a little extra room for that quarter inch uh, bolt that we're going to put through this to fit in there nicely.
And now that the routing is done, I just want to get in there with a little piece of sandpaper and just clean it up just a little bit. There are a few areas here that I went a little wonky with my router. I slipped a little bit. You know, that happens. And I'm not too concerned about it. After all, it is just an adjustment slot and it's a feather board. It's not fine woodworking. So I'm going to finish sanding this all up and then we're going to move on to making uh, the piece for the miter slot. Well, now it's time to make the miter bar for this project. And the first step that you want to do is measure the width of your miter slot. Um, in my case, it's three quarters of an inch. From there, you want to choose your material. Now, you can make this out of um, UHMW plastic. You can make it out of wood, like preferably hardwood. Um, you can make it from whatever you want. Just make sure whatever it is, it's good and solid and good and sturdy. Um, for me, I'm going to be using maple. So the first step is to rip a piece of maple um, that is the same width as your miter slot. And you probably want to make it anywhere from six to eight inches. You want a couple inches of overhang on the edges of your um, featherboard. Now at this point in time, we have our miter slot bar. My featherboard ended up being three and a half inches wide. So I left two inches on either side and this ended up being seven and a half long. It's three quarters of an inch wide and it's quarter inch thick stock. So we want to draw a line right down the middle of this and we want to drill two quarter inch holes right through it coinciding with the center of our adjustment slots. Now that we have those quarter inch through holes drilled, we want to put a deep countersink. And the reason for the deep countersink is that the bolts that we're going to be using are going to be quarter 20 thread, but they are a countersink bolt. They are not the normal T bolt that we would normally use for jigs and fixtures. This is a countersink bolt, and you will understand why just momentarily. But you want to put a countersink in these holes deep enough to sink this bolt flush with our miter uh, slot track. And there we have our bolt, nice and flush, nicely countersunk. And now it's time to cut a slot in this particular piece. And uh, just give me one second and I'll show you where to cut that. Well, we're gonna take this over to the scroll saw and that center line that we marked, we're gonna cut from approximately three quarters of an inch outside of this hole all the way through till three quarters of an inch past this one. I'm going to use a number seven blade just to get a thicker kerf in there. And uh, then when I get that cut, I'll come back and see and show you exactly why we do that and how it works. Now I've got the slot cut and you may notice here at the end of each of the uh, slot, at each end rather, I've drilled a one eighth of an inch hole. Um, the reason for that is it will help to prevent this piece from splitting. Why would it split? Well, sand up all your pieces and I'll show you how to put this thing together and I'll show you how it works. Now at this point, all you want to do is take your bolts, your countersunk bolts, and put them up through your miter slot bar. And then of course, with a washer, you want to uh, put on a couple of jig knobs with the same thread count as what your um, bolts are. Now the concept behind this is that as you tighten up these bolts, the countersink pulls in and spreads apart that slot that you cut and jams it against the edges of your miter slot. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that when marking for your holes, you want to have your miter slot 
lined up with the same 30 degree angle as what you have over here. If not, you'll end up with two holes like mine uh, because the first one was wrong. I had it at a 90 degree and it should have been at the 30 degree, same as the fingers of the feather board. No big deal. I make mistakes too. Um, it's all a matter of deciding how you want uh, to use this. I, I, I think eventually I'm going to replace this here with um, one of the plastic ones. A little less wear and tear on it, wears a little better, and uh, I just like it a little more. You don't have to worry about it splitting like you do with the maple. But in this case here, I'll just show you, you can adjust it um, as per the thickness of your stock, and then once you get it where you want it, you just lock these down. And just like I said, the, um, the maple spreads apart in that miter slot and that is rock solid. I mean, I'm moving my table here. So uh, it does a great job at locking it down. And the thing that I like here is the fact that these fingers are flexible. They're, they're um, because they're the one eighth and they're um, poplar, they have quite a bit of flex to them, but yet they'll give a good jam to prevent that um, kickback, whether it be um, used to hold your stock against the fence or at the table saw to keep it from kicking back. Um, just remember to keep it behind your blade. This one here was made uh, primarily here for at the router table. So um, this is where it's going to live. This is where it's going to be used. And uh, who knows, I might make another one for the table saw. And there you have it. A feather board. Uh, made completely out of scrap from another project. Uh, a waste of time? Some might say it is. Some might say, I know that there's some people out there that say, holy crap, the guy just spent all that time gluing this together and doing that and doing this. What a colossal waste of time. He could have just cut it on a, uh, on a bandsaw or cut those fingers on the table saw. You know, whatever, man, whatever. Is it a waste of time to come to your shop, use up scrap, and make something that's usable, having a great time while you're doing it? I think it was a great time and time well spent. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this project. Hopefully you're going to try your own. And who knows, maybe it'll push you in that direction to start thinking of how you can use up your scrap wood in your shop instead of throwing it out or burning it or whatever you do with your scrap. Guys, I hope you're going to give this one a try. To those who say it was a waste of time, I disagree 100%. I had a great time with it and hey, it's my show. So guys, I want to thank you for joining me again this week and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.